and let us all that we can to build a better future. Okay. I'm going to bring her up one more time. We're going to talk about AOC. And apparently Jacobin is a little bit triggered. They're upset about AOC or AOC, how I call her, uh, donating, uh, not donating, but endorsing uh, Joe Biden. So first of all, Indy, I want to get your take on AOC. And then, of course, obviously earlier in April, Bernie Sanders endorsing Joe Biden. Your thoughts before I delve into this Jacobin article. What are your thoughts on AOC endorsing Joe 30330? We were abandoned years ago, and it's not really a surprise. It's a disappointment, but it's just further confirmation that they are just Democrats. There is no such thing as justice Democrats. They are just Democrats, which just us. We knew just same us. Bernie, Bernie and his friend, Bernie, and his friend Joe. Um, uh, unfortunately, I'm worried that we're going to see that out of RFK. We're certainly going to see that at some point out of Marianne because they're running as Democrats. They wouldn't be running in the Democratic Party if they weren't going to eventually endorse Joe. So not surprising. I'm proudly, proudly blocked by Jacobin on Twitter because they're garbage as well. But let's hear what they have to say and why they're butthurt about their girl AOC. And maybe they're finally realizing three years late that these people were never really in their corner or represented them. Precisely. Exactly. And I also want to pull this up here, too, because, again, this kind of represents the vote blue, no matter who mindset, Democrats, liberals and so much more. So for those of you who can't see it, uh, everyone's still sick and unemployed. 2021. Biden inherited this mess from Trump. Give him some time. 2022. Biden still hasn't helped us. He wants to, but Republicans won't let him vote Democrat in the midterms. 2023. Dying here. Republicans picked up more seats. Maybe Biden should have spent uh, more political capital two years ago. And then 2024. This is the most important election ever. You have to vote or Ted Cruz will make America even more racist or fascist. Oh, my goodness. Gracious Cretaceous. It's like it's the end of the world. There's there. nobody there's... to vote. Who, who? How about that? Exactly. So, well, at the end there, they, they were literally yelling at a grave to to to, to not vote for, for Ted Cruz because they waited so long for health care and for housing and for food and for addressing any of the problems structurally here in in the United States, instead of giving a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine in the last year, that mm -hmm. they're no longer available, and they actually didn't make it. So then, AOC, Biden twenty twenty four. Wait, where am I? So that uh, <laughs> no, where am I, Jack? Where's the ice cream? So AOC shouldn't have endorsed Joe Biden, according to Jacobin, because Jacobin is triggered. Leading left wing politicians, I wouldn't even call them that, including Bernie Sanders, the cuck. Ilhan Omar, and most recently, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, also known as AOC, have already endorsed Joe 30330, even though primary voters haven't yet had their say, and most Democrats in polls don't even want him to run. A few days ago, Democratic, Democratic Socialist Congresswoman AOC became the latest in a string of prominent progressive politicians to endorse Joe Biden's bid for re-election. One of her fellow squad members, the Minnesota Zilhon Omar, uh, endorsed Biden almost a month ago when AOC wasn't quite ready to join her. Bernie Sanders endorsed him, like the cuck that he is, way back in April. I hated the months of April. I hated April. I hated everything from January to April of 2023. Those are the worst four months of this year. I will never look back at them fondly. But why, but why, why, why should any of them endorse Joe Biden right now? It would be one thing if this were the late 2024 and the country was facing an immediate uh, choice between Biden, Donald Trump, or Biden, DeSantis. And there was a real danger that the greater evil would win. So they're doing this, lesser and greater evil. Let me let, me let you all on a little hint who's watching oh, this show. God. There's no such thing as greater evil or lesser evil. Evil is the same across the board. OK, so if somebody's coming at me with a knife and someone's coming at me with a gun, both have the intent to hurt me. No, neither one of those two individuals has an ounce of good in them. They're trying to hurt me. So this lesser evil, greater evil is nothing but fear. And scare tactics that they want to do to voters right now, though, we're several months away from the first primaries. OK, so big deal. Socialist politicians should be articulating a clear alternative to the business as usual centrism of Biden. That's not going to work. 
or other leading Democrats. That's not all they should be doing, of course. They should also work toward concrete reforms that will make life better for working class people. You're actually right. The rent must have been due. This is an article titled The Rent Was Due in here. And now, immediately, these goals are sometimes in tension. But it's hard to see long-term way forward for the left. It doesn't start with being very clear about the fact that leftists and centrists aren't on the same team. That's not according to AOC. Yes. Oh, what a dumbass. Oh, the rent was due. Who wrote this? Ben Burgess. Ben Burgess. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ben Burgess wrote this? Okay. (laughs) He knows because he's the centrist. He knows that the left and, and the center aren't on the same team. He, yeah, no, go, he's go, been go, one go, of the go, biggest go, defenders go. of these clowns in the first place. <laughs> ben Burgess. Oh, AOC, you should do this. So look, a strong signal of democratic unity. The Associated Press headline about AOC's decision to endorse Biden, call it a strong signal. No, it was a weak, impotent signal, okay, of democratic unity. But how united are Democrats on a second unity. Biden case? Second Biden term, none of us are. Just before Biden kicked off his re-election bid in late April, one poll found that 73% of Americans didn't want the president to run again. He's 80 years old. He's an old man. He needs to go to a retirement home. His son is addicted to that bugger sugar, okay? They found that bugger sugar in the White House. I mean, seriously, not to mention scandal yes. after scandal around this administration. Hey, uh, Indy, just off the, just off the top of your mind, uh, can you name some problems that uh, have been getting worse under uh, Joe Biden's administration? I mean, obviously, uh, according to corporate media, they're saying that everything's all great under Biden. What what has exactly uh, happened under the Biden Harris administration? Just right right off the bat, can 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 you shoot a couple of things? Well, we've overfunded cops. The wealth gap's gotten greater. They kicked a million people off Medicaid. They promised $2,000 checks and gave us $1,400, tried to gaslight us that it was actually $2,000, didn't raise the federal minimum wage to $15, um, though though they did raise it for federal employees, and I will give them credit there. They did not get Congress to do that when they had a, super, a majority in both houses. They couldn't whip their... They're rotating villain into shape. They couldn't make any kind of threat that stuck. And then they funded Ukraine Nazis to the tune of $130 billion in the last 16 months. So other than that, we're doing great. Now, the other thing is, is again, Ben Burgess is still trying to sell this narrative that there should be a primary in the first place. And my contention is, again, in the last 40 years, no incumbent president has ever been challenged from within his party. And to mm-hmm. expect this this whole narrative around we need to challenge Joe Biden, the Democrats are nominating Joe Biden if he's breathing. If he's breathing, even if he's got dementia, they're mm-hmm. going to nominate him. You know, another but, thing here, too, uh, again, with the, the whole nomination process, you know, the Democratic Party has already made it abundantly clear that there will not be a debate. So let's say Bernie Sanders decided to throw his hat in the ring. There's st- Bernie's still not going to be debating Joe Biden. There will be no debate. So a- so all this uh, talk about, oh, they shouldn't have endorsed Joe Biden. Well, AOC is following orders. Plus, on top of that, too, I just want to add in here. Hey, Ben Burgess, are you going to talk about the fact that Roe v. Wade died under this administration? Affirmative action died under this administration. $20,000 of student debt forgiveness never happened. In fact, the Biden-Harris administration, we're never going to fight for it. We got trains derailing. We got corrupt officials in the administration. We have, again, uh, an an economic crisis. Americans are being kicked out of their homes and apartments. So, uh, yeah, things are not uh, all great within the Democratic Party. And if you're a progressive thinking that this party can be reformed, good luck. As Nathan Robinson points out in Current Affairs, before Biden's announcement, we were seeing headlines like Democrats coalesce around Biden 2024 run as re-election decision looms. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. There's there, there's all this talk. So no matter what's going to happen, all the Democratic lawmakers are going to rally around Biden. Now, again, what I find interesting yep. is that that doesn't mean Biden won't win the renomination. Oh, yes, it does. What? Because... Because the DNC, uh, okay. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, take it away, buddy. The donors also want him. The donors want him on top of the rest of the party. So you've got all the party heavies and the power brokers on top of the donors that want all this to happen. Follow the money, guys. Um, your yeah. wishful thinking isn't going to impact anything here. And again, they're trying to sell 
thing. They're trying to sell ad space. They're trying to get you to read their stuff. But this whole thing is meaningless and irrelevant. And no, this is not abandoning democracy. There is no party that has an incumbent president in the last 40 years that has had their president challenged with, for for re-election. And they know that a not a current incumbent president has the best chance of being reelected as badly as he's done. Mm. He's going to win on name recognition alone over anybody else. Williamson, even a Kennedy name. When was the last time a Kennedy was elected nationally anywhere? It's been a long time. It is. So and, and, and my contention is they're just going to put Biden up. They, not only will they do that, but again, uh, there's plenty of legal documentation showing that the Democratic Party is admitted to their private institution. They could pick up or uh, select who they want as their nominee. So that means, let's say in the off chance scenario, because I'm going to dismiss her, Marianne Williamson's campaign is dead in the water. Let's say in the off chance scenario, RFK Jr. were to potentially win the nomination. The DNC legally has within its right to say, we don't accept the results. Then, of course, you got to add in the superdelegates, and they could still have Biden be the winner after the Democratic convention in 2024 that will be taking place here in Chicago. So no matter what happens, even if there was a big-name progressive, let's say AOC put on her big girl pants and decided to run, or it was uh, Bernie Sanders or some other progressive uh, or uh, some other Democrat, right, uh, quote-unquote progressive. Let me be very clear on that, quote-unquote progressive. It still wouldn't matter. There's not going to be a debate. And so then the article goes on to say the only two candidates who, ha who have are RFK Jr. and Marianne Williamson. Wiley derived as conspiracy theorists with unsavory associations and a suspicious amount of Republican support. Well, look, I may not agree with everything that RFK Jr. is saying, but he's doing something that's politics 101 reaching out to all voters. Politics 101 is convincing everybody across the political spectrum that you are the better candidate. But then again, I digress, continue on. It's currently hard to see how Kennedy could get enough Democratic support to, to dethrone the Democratic incumbent, even one who isn't inspired much enthusiasm among Democratic voters. Williamson has forced... Right, but that's not what he's yeah. trying to do. Wait, stop, 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 yeah, stop. On, what he's on. trying to do is pull over Republicans and non-vote and disaffected independents to vote for him in the Democratic Party and overwhelm the people that are actual Democratic voters, some of the Democratic voters will go with him, but most of them have been poisoned against him by corporate media and mm -hmm. big pharma. Um, now, he's been getting a fair shake on Fox News and Fox News has more Democratic viewers than MSNBC does. And nobody likes to talk about that fact, but especially in prime time, more people are watching. Well, I don't know about now, but when Tucker was there yeah. until recently, Fox News had been the number one uh, viewed viewed network among Democrats, uh, yes. especially, and Tucker was beating out Rachel in the times in the time slot. Oh, of course, man, he had the most popular show ever. He had. You see, the thing is, I, again, we're a little bit off track here, but I'm glad you brought up Tucker. Uh, and the thing is, what what Tucker Carlson did for his show is he had progressives and independents, people who were not traditional Democrats or conservative Republicans, and he let them talk. He let, unlike uh, I would say Bill O'Reilly, right? He he would let his guests talk. And uh, shared her perspectives and points of view. Hell, uh, I think it was Jimmy Dore that changed his mind about Julian Assange. Uh, you know, you had Jimmy Dore on, Tulsi Gabbard, Dr. Cornell West, um, Max Blumenthal. Mm -hmm. I believe he had Aaron Maté on, Glenn Greenwald. Uh, I, I think even Matt Taibbi a few times. So, I mean, again, these are people where if they were on MSNBC would not be allowed to speak. Or is it if they were being interviewed, let's say, by somebody uh, like Bill O'Reilly, they would be sh shut down. Tucker was able to have his platform open. And the thing is, by having those different people on, that also tuned in for other people across the political spectrum. Check out Tucker Carlson's show, which, again, which is uh, something I have to commend and salute to RFK Jr. for actually reaching out to other voters to maybe support him in the primary. Now, again, if you are an RFK Jr. supporter, look, I'm not going to vote Democrat. But you better start pulling out that notepad, brewing some coffee, and taking notes of everything that happened to Bernie Sanders in 2016, to what happened to him in 2020, and how Tulsi Gabbard was smeared in 2020, okay? Take the notes and document mm -hmm. everything, because the election fraud that the DNC is going to be doing will be click, copy, paste. So document everything. That's the only thing I'll tell you what to do. And yes, Hard Lens Media will be covering the convention here in Chicago. Continuing on, Williamson has forced rightly uh, for progressive positions. Oh, she's writing a freaking book, you jag off, on issues like labor. Now, my question to you, Kit. Yeah. yeah. My question to you is the Chicago, the Chicago convention, is it actually going to be like 
anything other than a coronation, anything other than a four day ass kissing celebration, like complete gaslighting of the entire world over how rah rah great Joe Biden is when we all know that the complete opposite is true. Wow. I, well, there's, there's, I give you credit for for wanting to cover that. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I, no, I, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, obviously, right off the bat, anybody who's anybody within the Democratic Party is going to be there. This is going to be a major event. And while this is not related to the article, I mean, let's face it, Harlan's Media, we are an independent media network here in Chicago. This is our backyard. It would be odd. If we didn't cover it, I know a lot of people are burnt out by electoral yep. politics, but because this is happening in my backyard, um, I feel I'm socially contracted to actually, you know, cover this because, again, it's it's an important event because there won't be just the vote blue no matter who people. There will obviously be protesters and people who are against the establishment. And uh, look, I ideally. I hope that the convention is a contested convention that RFK Jr. does follow through with what he said on News Nation that, you know, he will go all the way to the end of the, of the convention. I want to interview some of those RFK Jr. sports. And yes, I want to interview some of the vote blue no matter who people, because I think it's important for uh, the viewers to see that maybe this could be the beginning of the end of the Democratic Party. And I say this because, look, voters are not impressed with Biden. He is showing himself to be a senile old bat. AOC, I know that you see the videos. I know that you see Biden stuttering and stammering. But yet, somehow, out of the blue, you're thinking, what, he's doing great with the ebbs and flows that he's exceeding expectations? If Roe v. Wade died under Trump, AOC, I know that you would be leading the protests right now, be it through the winter, be it through the summer, be it through fall or spring. You, AOC, would be on the streets or tweeting consistently about how we need to protect the woman's right to choose. But you didn't do that under Biden. So again, somehow, again, uh, you've once again revealed to the whole world that you were always going to be a corporate sellout and you're falling in line with the Democratic Party. So what I hope from this convention that we see in Chicago is that maybe it'll be a contested convention. I hope it's not the snore fest that happened in 1996 when the Clintons won the nomination because that was a snore fest. I don't know, or may, or maybe, or maybe even, get- even 2012. Yeah, you know, with 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 uh, Obama, it was literally just a celebration of Obama for three days. It was basically like a big birthday party for him. I don't want to see something like that for Joe Biden. Um, it, it, I think that it is important it, yeah. for you to go cover it at Hardlands. By the way, I wasn't I wasn't yeah. saying that it's not no, important no, no, to cover no, it. I was no, just no, giving you a lot of credit for wanting to. Well, but it is important to provide the independent perspective and holding them accountable to say, "Here's what's really happening." Here's yeah, they're saying this, but here's what's really going on, and here's why what they're saying isn't true. And yeah. I think that it's important for you and for Hardlands to be there to do that. And I, I commend you for that for sure. Yeah, no, no, but I have I have gotten a few messages like, why do you want to cover it? I mean, it's it's obviously it's it's a big political event, but it's all again. I do. I hopefully we can get get enough resources to get some new gear and equipment so that we can properly document everything and uh, you know film everything and do proper live streams and find out what's going on, on the ground. It's obviously there'll be a lot of uh, confirmation. Like, yeah, the DNC is just once again one big corporate circle jerk, but uh, it's it's important for people to see just how the institution of the DNC, the Democrats are inherently corrupt and there's no way possible to ever reform that political party. So AOC endorsing Joe Biden too soon. uh, It comes as no surprise to me, but I guess Ben Burgess is like, no AOC, keep the powder dry. And then at the end, endorse Joe Biden only at the end because orange man, bad look folks. I really don't care how you're going to vote during this election cycle. Vote how you feel like, okay? Uh, But I, for one, will not be voting Democrat or Republican. I'll be voting independent. And what we should take away from this is that never hero worship these politicians. I know AOC inspired a lot of people. She made a lot of people happy when she won in 2018. But that person who we saw won and the person we see now, it was all one big lie. Smoke and mirrors. She was never going to raise the ruckus. And if you do, well, at least what happened to Jose Vega, she told him, you're being rude. Don't raise the ruckus on me. You're being rude, which is um, says a lot. So you can't reform the Democratic Party and AOC endorsing Biden too soon comes as no surprise. Just another disappointment 
and a long, sad history of disappointments.